I know that there, there, um, maybe I don't need a uh, microphone because we are all together here, so I'll uh, avoid using microphone. Uh, you, can, you all can hear me, right? Um, especially because I need my hands and type and there's also this microphone here and so everything looks good so we can start. Um, for do, do, uh, usually people ask me uh, about the slides and the slides are already available in this link here. Okay, oh, nice, I like this. Uh, my name is Rafael Benevides. I work for Oracle as a cloud native development evangelist. But essentially, I'm a Java developer. That's my background. That's what I do and what I did before becoming a cloud native evangelist. But let's talk about service mesh, Istio, microservices. And let's understand first the context. Before we produce microservices, we need to go through a kind of evolutionary process. We need to evolve. We need to uh, go from uh, an old school uh, methodology to what's called the new school. So if we decide to produce microservices, first we need to evolve and do some kind of evolutionary process by first reorganizing our team and adopt DevOps practices, right? The next step of this evolutionary process is have a self-service on-demand elastic infrastructure, something that you can shrink and grow based on your demand. And when I say self-service, it means no ticket, Some, something that you can go to your intranet and select, I want uh, a VM, I want a provision environment, something like that, something that will not take two weeks for you to receive, because we are, all, all, most of us, are expensive resources to the company. Why expensive resources should wait for something uh, unexpensive like a VM, right? So we need something uh, uh, more, more uh, easy to get, like a self-service. The next step is automation. With automation, then we can have CI-CD deployment pipeline. With CI-CD deployment pipeline, with automation, automation of builds, tests, uh, 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 environment provision, then we can start thinking about advanced deployment techniques like uh, canary deployments, AB, uh, blue-green deployment, AB, AB tests. Finally, we can have uh, our first microservice. And who knows, we can become the next Silicon Valley unicorn, but if if we think for a moment with uh, Kubernetes, Oracle Linux, Istio, we can have a lot of unicorn power in our infrastructure. Let's see why. Uh, before going through uh, Istio, we need to understand that for many, many years, we deployed our application as a single block, as a monolithic application. But of course, inside, we had modules, we had uh, the sales model, the uh, finance models, etc. But in a moment in time, we decided to turn these modules into microservice. Why? Because we need to have uh, independent deployment, independence uh, of deployment. Uh, so we got these microservices in different technologies, in different, uh, in, uh, pro produced in different languages, and we decided to spread it in a network of services, cre creating a service mesh, where each microservice can have their own data, and some of them will have multiple points of entry, and all of them, it's not, uh, I could not express in this slide, but all of them need a pipeline. Need a way to get your code from a, a repository and place it on production. And let's recap some principles of microservice. Uh, the first one I, I, I said, we need, uh, we decided to create microservice because we need the in, in, uh, independent, the, uh, independence of deployment. We need to any moment deploy a piece of software on production 
because of bug, because of a new feature, because uh, there will be a, a sales event and then we need to, to be prepared for that. Something that needs more agility to reach on production. So the first step is deployment independence. Of course, to achieve this, that deployment independence, we need to have a very focused and very clear API. Sometimes the, the API can change, so we need an evolutionary design as well. Because we are talking from, uh, we have a service A calling service B, we need, and things can go wrong, we need uh, to design for failure. Uh, as I said, decentralized data management, decentralized governance. I will not go deeply, uh, I will not go deep on these points because this is not a microservice talk. We need to, uh, I, const I imagine that all of you are producing microservices and want to, go, uh, want to do a step beyond, uh, want to achieve something more advanced. But having that in mind, that having a monolith was called like a old school and producing microservices, deploying them on containers is considered and, and, and running them on top of Kubernetes is called the new school. But no, microservice is, is not different uh, on what we have learned uh, on the computer science school. It's, it's, there's nothing new. We are talking about distributed computing. We saw that in the IT industry. We saw that with Corba, for those who are on, in the industry for more time. We saw that with Java, RME. Uh, uh, HBs, we saw that in, in the Microsoft Microsoft world, world with COM and DCOM. So it's everything about distributed computing. It's not that's not new. It's the same principle. So what we do when we are when when we have uh, distributed computing, we tend to think that there are no problems. It's just to implement an inter interface and pr perform remote invocation. But we forget that, uh, we tend to, f to, to forget that uh, and think that the network is always reliable, that nothing can fail. Or we forgot about the latency, we forgot about the cost of the transport, we forgot about the bandwidth. Uh, for example, it happened once for uh, I, here, I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. The slides are online. My, I, I need a DNS resolution to show the demo that I, uh, that, were, that I will present to you. If the network crashes, I will have a problem. So I have a big backup. I will use my 4G hotspot. But I was once in a customer and my hotspot failed also. Uh, I had, my bandwidth was over, so things can go wrong. And we tend to forget about that. So usually what do we do uh, when th something goes wrong, and it will go wrong, uh, we, what we want to do is avoid a cascading failure. We don't want that a single crash in a single microservice destroy the whole environment. So we place some capabilities inside our microservice. We place a service discovery because service A can, needs to find service B. We place load balancer because, as I said, one of the requirements is that uh, the infrastructure needs to be elastic. So it might have uh, multiple replicas of the service B. So we need a load balancer on a server, server load ba balance or a client load balancer to to communicate with the different instances of the service B. We need resilience because service B cannot be always on available. We need metrics, we need tracing. All those things we place inside our microservices. So let's recap the history of microservice. Of course, in 2006, the cloud was born with, the, with Amazon releasing uh, the EC2 project then, for those who are Java developers, by the way, who, are, who is Java a Java developer here besides me? Oh, we have one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Six, I saw you. <laughs> um, that was important because 
mo most of the time we deployed applications on, applica on application servers. With, with Drop Wizard and Vertex, we don't need a, a, a application server. We have a fat jar, self-contained, self, uh, a self-contained uh, file that executes the application and the application server. Then in 2012, though it's, I know that's, it's not that clear here, but it's uh, the project for, from Netflix called Ribbon, Hystrix, and Eureka. And they all were also very important. Why? Because there was a, 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 a conference just like this that we are, we are here discussing technology. And the people from Netflix said, hey, one third of, uh, of the internet traffic on Saturday night runs on our servers. And everyone, oh, how is that possible? How they can scale? And every, the, the microservice is not a common term. No, no one was talking about microservice. They all, all want to know what my, Netflix was doing to support, to scale, and have one third of the internet traffic on a Saturday night running through their servers. And they, because of, uh, of that talk, they decided to show to the world how they were doing, and they released those projects as a open source projects. Then <clears throat> happened what I called the perfect storm for microservice. We have in the Java world Spring Boot, so we don't use application servers. We have containers, we have microservice was defined by the ThoughtWorks, uh, the ThoughtWorks uh, by Mar Marching, uh, Marching Faller. Uh, Kubernetes was also released in 2014, so since 2015, Everyone is going crazy about microservices. But what's wrong with Netflix OSS? First, it's Java only. Uh, and as I asked, not everyone here is a Java developer. Probably, if you use different languages like Node, I'm also a Node developer, you need a similar library that, that does the same thing, that provides circuit breakers, load balancer, distributed tracing, et cetera, et cetera. If you are a Python developer, you need also a library that does the same thing. If you are a Go developer, this, you need a library. So no matter what language you are using, no matter if, if it's JavaScript, Go, Java, your microservice needs to provide certain capabilities. For example, first, we need uh, API, we, that's easy, right? We need to provide an API for, uh, to be consumed. The next one is a discovery mechanism. We need a way to find, to locate that, that mechanism, that, that, that microservice. Once that we locate that microservice, we need an invocation mechanism. Is it synchronous, asynchronous? Is it REST endpoint? Is it graphic, GraphQL? Is it messaging? Then we need elasticity. We need a way to shrink and grow uh, the number of replicas executing, executing on production. We need resilience if something goes wrong. We need a pipeline. We need to get the source code from our repository, or from our source repository and place it on production. We need authentication because not every microservice is public. So we need to guarantee authentication. We need logging. Uh, and distribute logging, distributed logging, because we have several replicas running. We need distributed tracing, we, and of course monitoring. We need, we need to know how is the health of each one of those microservices. So, with Kubernetes and some open source projects, we can achieve most of the, those things besides the API. So. For example, if you adopt Kubernetes, you have discovery for free. You have invocation for free. We, ha uh, we have elasticity for free. And with other open source projects, we have like uh, for, for distributed tracing, we can use Jagger. With monitoring, we can use Prometheus, Prometheus Grafana. Uh, for logging, we can use a stack like uh, ELK, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, or EFK, Elasticsearch, FluentD, Fluent and Kibana. 
for pipelines, we have Jenkins. And with Istio, which is a service mesh implementation, we can have all those things uh, as part of the infrastructure, not as part of the application. So let's, I said that Istio is a service mesh implementation. So the question is, okay, Rafael, what is a service mesh? The best way that I found to describe what is a service mesh is just like a, a helper. A helper, it, in fact, it's a proxy. It's a proxy that, imagine that I'm the main application, and if I want to talk with another microservice, I will not talk directly. I will tr talk to my helper, and my helper, which is a proxy, technically speaking, will talk to, to the other application. So if the uh, destination uh, service is not available, I don't need to handle, it, handle any failure. The helper knows how to handle, handle failures, uh, retries, uh, so it, it will retry the communication, it will um, provide circuit breaker fun functionalities, it will route my request to, the, to proper microservices, um, all those things that uh, will help us to achieve a more advanced mechanism of microservice communication. So, with Istio, we gain a more intelligent uh, discovery mechanism. We gain, we gain resilience, as I said. If something goes wrong, I don't need to handle that. The, my helper, which is Istio, will handle the, any communication problem. Uh, any authentication can be handled also by Istio. Monitoring for free, tra tracing for free. Okay, talk is easy, I'll show that to you. So, for, before showing, I, I need first that you understand how Istio works. So, as I said, before Istio, you have to place all those capabilities inside each one of those micro, microservices. After Istio, those capabilities is placed inside sidecar containers. So th those sidecar containers intercept all the traffic using IP tables. Yes, it's true. They, it will uh, execute IP tables when the container starts. We will redirect all the traffic to the sidecar container, which runs Envoy. So let me show here to you what is Envoy. Envoy proxy. And why I'm showing that to you? Because you need to understand that Envoy is an open source edge and service proxy proxy designed for cloud-native applications. So it's specialized for cloud-native applications. It, it's, it was written in C, so it's very lightweight, uh, and it handles HTTP 1 and 1.1, uh, HTTP 2, gRPC, and if it, it cannot handle any one of these, those high application level protocols, it will fall to TCP. So, it completely understand um, application communication. So yeah, that's the idea of the sidecar container running in parallel with the application. That, that's the, where the name came from, a sidecar. So as I, I told you, it provides you intelligent routing. We will see that. So we can do A-B tests, canary, smart canary releases. We can perform uh, chaos injection. injection, injection. For example, how do we know what will happen with our microservices if something goes slow? We, the only way to test is making it slow. So with Istio, we can make it slow. But it's not the application that's slow. It, we can turn our proxy to create a delay. Okay, uh, uh, make a simulation that the, your, the microservice is low. So the, the proxy will take like you decide three seconds, seven seconds to reply each request, or 50% of the request, or just throw random 503 errors. That's completely possible. 
uh, circuit breakers, observability. So I'll, I'll show that's better than just talking. Fleet-wide policy enforcement. And to understand how it still works, each application has the sidecar container, right? And on the control plane side, we have at least those four containers. The first one is the pilot. The pilot will send to every sidecar container the, the configuration. The configuration that's uh, validated by Galley. In the other hand, the mixer receives the information, the statistic information from each sidecar container. Why? Because it can be used for quota, for rate limiting. So sup again, suppose that I'm a, I'm a microservice that can handle 10 requests per second. I can create a rule in Istio that will deny the 11th request per second, that will protect my microservice. The only way that it knows how many requests are re the, the uh, microservice is receiving is by consuming the information from, from the sidecar. As I said, the mixer does that to use those information for quota, rate limiting, access control list. Uh, we will we'll see that. So now, in 2019, we don't need Netflix Rebound, we don't need Eureka, we don't need Netflix Zoo, we need Netflix Hystrix, we don't need to install open tracing by hand because we, uh, in Istio we have the installation of Jagger for free. So no matter what language you, you are using, with Istio, uh, Kubernetes, and Oracle Linux, you are completely uh, polyglot. Let's see that by better than talking is showing. So what I did here is that I installed three microservices. Microservice A, talking to B, talking to C, and as you can see here, it's called customer, that calls the preference microservice, that talks, that calls recommendation version one, and here is the name of the host. I have just one pod, just one container running with, the, with a counter. So, when I installed Istio, uh, Grafana was installed also. So let me open here the, oops, the Grafana console. So let's open Grafana. And I can see here uh, two operations per second. I have different um, Istio panels. So I have the galley, mesh, mixer, performance, pilot, service, workload. So I selected here the workload so I can see different informations that are being captured automatically by Istio. I didn't, I just installed Istio and Grafan is part of the installation. So the, the, uh, the container, the sidecar containers intercept the information and place it and send it automatically here to, um, to Grafana. What else we have as part of, of, of observability? We have a project called Kiali. So let me open here. Scripts, open Kiali. So let me open Kiali here. Kiali is really nice because I can visually see my, my, my microservices. So let me open here the graph. I can see here and select traffic animation, request percentage. So I can see that uh, the traffic goes, goes through the ingress gateway called call customer, that calls preference, that calls recommendation. Everything's okay. And I'll keep it open just to show more things during the demo. Uh, what else I have here? I have Jagger, so let, let me, let's open Jagger and explore. And explore my microservices. 
So I can find every request that came through the Istio uh, gateway, and I can see here the, all the details of distributed tracing. So I see that the Ingress gateway called customer, they reported to Mixer, then the customer called preference, and finally it called recommendation. And it's interesting to see that it intercepts all from, from the proxy. Even what the, the traffic that goes through the proxy is captured here. So before invoking the, 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 the server, the JAX-RS server, as I said, I'm using Java here, uh, the traffic went through the proxy. Uh, what else I have here? As observability, I have Prometheus. So let me open Prometheus here. Script, Prometheus. And again, I have several metrics available to consume. So I will get, for example, my the memory, the container memory uh, for the namespace tutorial. And I can see here <clears throat> the memory consumption of each microservice plus the proxies. You can see them here. Yeah, sure. So let me see if I understood the, the question. Um, in, at Jagger, how does it know uh, what, what needs to be traced? Exactly. So if we take a look here on open tracing specification, uh, you, let me see if it's easy to find. Dun, dun, dun. Let me see. open tracing. Because uh, what happens on distributed tracing is that it uh, sends a specific headers, which they call, the, uh, they capture the trace ID which is the beginning for, uh, until the end. And for each uh, piece of uh, invocation, it call, it, it's called the spam. So it has a, a spam ID that has, its, uh, that has a, a trace ID as a parent, and, I, and there is also that, that relation. And an envoy uh, handles automatically those uh, headers. Uh, if there is no uh, open tracing header, it creates new one with handle IDs and propagates it. So the next microservice, the envoy proxy capture the existing header, uh, associate the create creates a new header for the span, associate with the parent span, and then it will create the, the, that relationship between spans and traces. N no, that, that's the beauty of the thing, because as an application developer, you don't need to capture automatically. Envoy will capture and propagate for you. So that's really, really nice. So yeah, so just look for uh, open tracing. Let me see here, trace ID and span ID. I want to see if it's more or less like this. Uh, it would, uh, da, da. It's this, this kind of relationship. So there is a trace and several spans with the relationship between them. them. So it's a, a specification about open tracing. So, but the beauty, as I said, is that it made automatically. 
Now, let's start playing with traffic control. Uh, so to play with traffic control, I need to first understand how can I, uh, I, I need first to create a new version. As you saw, I have uh, recommendation version one. I will create a new microservice called recommendation version two. And to, the question is how to place a sidecar container in my application. I have two ways to do that. Uh, the recommended way is to place a, a, a um, label on the namespace, the label it's called Istio Injection Enabled. Automatically, Istio will place a sidecar container for you or for every microservice. But for uh, learning purpose, I will show the manual way, which is using the Istio CTL command. So let me go here. If I go to the recommendation Kubernetes files, I have here several files. If I use the deployment v2 um, YAML, you will see that this YAML here does not have any proxy, okay? So I can run the command istioctl cube inject. Is, can, can you see? Cube inject and with the file deployment v2. That will create a new file that I can redirect to deploy with Istio YAML. Let's take a look on the difference between them. So I'll see the difference of deployment v2 and deploy with Istio. So we can see that when I ran the Istio CTL cube inject command, it modified uh, the file to include the sidecar container. That's what the Istio does automatically for you when, when you have the label. So now I can run the command kubectl create dash f deploy with Istio. That will create Oops, I, kubectl, I, de, I deployed on the wrong, so hold on a second. Let me set the proper namespace. Oops, create, get pods, yeah. Now I, I'm deploying the recommendation v2, and in some seconds, you will see v2 responding here. Okay, so let's wait. Running, running, two containers inside the pod. They are running, and now we have version one and version two. Now let's start playing. What I want to do now, first, is an example of blue-green deployment. Blue-green deployment is easy. I can I place a new version on production, just like I did with version two, and I can just switch the route to, from one version to another. So let's do that. Let me say, Let me go to Kiali. Uh, I will do that using the graphical graph interface. So I'm going to recommendation, and I can here, for example, suspend the traffic. I want to suspend the traffic to v2, v1 and to v1 uh, to v2, suspend the traffic to v1 and send all the traffic to v1. So as as we can see, only v1 is responding, or vice versa. I can um, suspend, it, connect v2, suspend v1, update the traffic, and now we see just v2 replying, as as easy as a, a, a button click. Or I can perform a canary deployment. Canary deployment became very popular popular with the British code miners, but in the IT industry, we place a small canary version 
on production, and then we s just increase the traffic to that version. By default, on Kubernetes, it's always 50-50, just like we saw. But with Istio, we can control the amount of traffic, just like, for example, let's go to Kiali, and I want to, first let me delete this route and use a weighted routing. So I will send 90% of the traffic to V1 and 11% of the traffic to V2. So now we can see just V1, 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 now V2, now v a, lot, a bunch of V1s, and once in a while we will see V2 appearing here. So let's wait. Come on, V2. Yeah, V2 is there, and we can uh, even increase that to, for example, uh, almost 70% of the traffic. Now we'll, we'll see V2 more often. Or we can even do, for example, uh, we can create a matching routing. So if the header or the, sch the scheme or method or the authority, any other, uh, other information, for example, if the header, uh, user agent is, uh, or the, uh, uh, the regex or is matched with Firefox, something like that, we can send the traffic to V2 or and everything else we'll see v1 we can do that create a route and every now everyone will see v1 and only those requests that has the agent uh, firefox will see v2 that's completely possible imagine a use case for um, a finance institution or an airline company where a vip customer will see a vip version of the application so that's totally possible if you capture the profile data and place it on the, the, on the HTTP header. So if I delete the traffic, I can see now back V1 and V2. What else I can do with uh, Istio? I can perform a dark launch. Do you know what is a dark launch? Dark launch is not so popular, but it became very uh, famous with Facebook. Facebook released uh, Facebook Messenger uh, one year before we seen it online. How they do, did that? Uh, they mirrored every request that you did for uh, when you wrote on a friend's timeline. It was they captured the data and sent it to Facebook Messenger. We can do the same by, for example, I can send. Uh, send every traffic to V1 and mirror the request to V2. So we can offline test V2. We can see how is it performing related to CPUs, memory consumption, and et cetera. We see the logs and correct it even without seeing it. So what, what I will do now is create a mirrored request. So let me do it here. Script. Now I will not use Kiali anymore because Kiali does not have support for that. I'm sending the configuration uh, manually. So I have a script here that places the configuration. Now I can see that the requests are going to V1. How do I know that's going to V2 as well? By checking the logs. So I can see here logs in the namespace tutorial for recommendation v2 in the container recommendation and follow the logs. So we can see here that the counter is increment, incrementing, incrementing, which means that's receiving requests. So the requests are being mirrored. Now I can go here and check and, ch and can, can go to Prometheus check the, all the information, I can verify the CPU consumption, etc. cetera. Um, what else we can do with Istio? Uh, service resilience, that's really nice. So first, let's clean, 
let's remove all the rules. And what I have here is a script that makes v2 fail. So let me make it fail. Um, we try fail. So now every request from v2 will return a 503 error. From the moment that I make, made a uh, recommendation failed, you can see that v2, v1 is the only one receiving requests. Why is that? Because the proxy on preference tri tries recommendation. Recommendation gives me an error. I can prove that, that v2 is receiving requests. But it returns 503 instead, and then it's is to automatically ignores that request, and you see just v1. So I can run a script that fix that, making it return 200, and now it's not ignoring the requests anymore. What else we can do with Istio? Uh, we can do chaos testing. For example, we can make the microservices low. So let's do here, I can create a delay. So now only v2 will be slow when so every time that we ask access v2, it will take some seconds to reply. Everything's low now. So we can try um, our microservices and create a, a chaos inject injection. Uh, I can create, uh, write uh, white lists and black lists for access. So for example, I can create a black list where, and allow just the communication I can, I, I can deny everything and allows just the, the, the communication between customer and preference, preference and recommendation. I can create a white list, everything is, is, is allowed, but uh, everything is denied, but only this, um, only these requests are allowed. Black list, uh, everything is allowed, but I can deny recommendation, access, preference, and so on. Uh, and this, this one is the, a feature that I like the most. Because imagine that someone installs a, a, a script that's capturing your data and it's sending it to outside your cluster. It's stealing your sensitive information. So most of the communication of uh, microservices are internal, but you can block uh, outside communication. So for example, I have here a script that tries to communicate with World Clock API. So if I try to connect to World Clock API to just get a, a, a time, you can see here that it's giving me bad gateway because it's denied for, by default every outside communication. I can write a rule that allows that access to World um, to world clock API. So now I have that egress rule. And when I try to access, oops, come on. Finally, I'll have access. HTTP 200, and I have the, the time output here. If I clean up the, the rule, try to access again, the communication is not possible. So that's really good to protect every uh, outbound com communication from the cluster. Of course, it's too many things to learn in you know, 45 minutes. So what I want to give you is to suggest um, this tutorial that's available here. Uh, it's <clears throat> so you can install those microservices, and the, install, um, install Wistio, install the microservices, and try everything that I presented to you, like the observability, the traffic control, service resilience, chaos testing, policy, security, and so on. And the most important thing is that you can run all those things, as I did here, on top of Oracle Linux, because Oracle Linux is a cloud-native environment. So you can place Kubernetes on top of Oracle Linux, install Istio, and 
run your containers with a service mesh application on top of Oracle Linux, which is the what I'm using here uh, deployed on my virtual box is a Oracle Linux version that I installed Kubernetes and, and Istio. Oops. Just in time. Oops. Okay, so if you have any questions, please, that's our time to make it so. Well, that we, everything inside the containers runs Envoy. So for example, let me show here. Yeah, what, what, what the, what Istio does is simplify the usage of Envoy. So for example, if I get here the proxy log, let me see. Istio, Istio proxy. Uh, together, inside the pod, if I don't specify here the, the container, it will say, inside this pod, you have two containers. You have the recommendation, which is the application, and you have the Istio proxy. So if I consume, if I try to access Istio proxy, what I'm seeing here is the log, log of Envoy. So Envoy is being used under the hood to perform all those magics. What Istio does is spread the same configuration, the same rules that I wrote here to all proxies uh, in my fleet uh, of microservices. So it's... Uh, Istio comes with Envoy, and I never seen uh, someone try to use another proxy as an implementation. Yeah, so you can see here. Yeah. The good question, and most people do that question. What's the additional latency or additional memory or CPU overhead? Uh, based on what I've seen, and we can take a look, um, well, it's a question of millimilliseconds for the traffic and approximately six meg, six meg of RAM for each con sidecar container. Uh, I can't say about CPU usage, it's really low, but that's wh what I've seen. It's, in, in big clusters, that's not a huge impact, uh, especially because we are moving things from, the ins ins from inside the application to, um, to the infrastructure. Plus, what I've installed here was the demo version of Istio. When you are about to install Istio, you have two in in kinds of installation. The production version, which will not capture every data, which will not capture every span and trace ID, uh, and, and it will uh, just collect some statistics data and send it to, to Jagger, for example. Now, uh, for demo purpose, I need to cap capture every request. So, of, of course, that has uh, uh, more resource consumption, more uh, latency than if I was using the production version of Istio. Right? Hey, how are you? Uh, thank you for the great presentation. Where can we find examples? Examples. Well, uh, here in this demo, I have several examples here. So, for example, let's t take a look at traffic control. I have from simple to advanced. For the resilience, I have examples here for retry, timeout, fail fast. Uh, chaos testing I have here for f five or three years where it's delays and everyone here they have a link for the file so you can see 
In the tutorial, if you go to the GitHub repo, let me increase the font size here, you will see the, all the different files, like for example, disable mutual TLS authentication, enable mutual TLS authentication, um, let me see here, what else? Circuit breaker, enable role-based access control. So this tutorial was very, it's very, very, very uh, complete. If you can look here, let me see. I've been working on this tutorial with other people from since I was a Red Hatter. Before joining uh, Oracle, I was a Red Hatter. So yeah, of, uh, as, I, as I said, I'm at the top one contributor of this project, but there are a lot of people that worked on this tutorial as well, um, contributing with so many things, that's, that's why it makes so complete at this moment. The difference is that when I, uh, we started it at Red Hat, it was focused on OpenShift, and what I did is when I joined Oracle, I forked this project and created, a, um, and I forked this tutorial and focused only on uh, vanilla Kubernetes, just to show that it's possible to run and have everything that I ran here running on vanilla Kubernetes. So that's the, the difference. But it's very complete, this tutorial, so you can, can try. You're welcome. Yes, uh, so let me show you it here to you. It's your files. Um, let me see. V1 and V2. Here, delay. So you can see here, fixed delay of seven seconds on 50% of the requests. When the whole, the source is recommendation, calling, oh no, the source, the destination is recommendation. Sorry, I, I, no, I'm, in fact, uh, Istio uses Kubernetes uh, under the, uh, as a discovery mechanism under, under the hood. So if you look here, what you see represented by this triangle is the service, is the, Istio, is the Kubernetes service. So you can even see here. So for example, the traffic goes to, the, you, can, you can even see here that it has cluster IP, uh, the ports, but, and it has two endpoints, the version one and the version two. I've heard some in, uh, initiatives to allow uh, intra clusters uh, serve smash, but I've never tried. I can't say for sure if it works. Uh, probably it's on the roadmap because everyone is talking about uh, fed federation of clusters, but I I've, I've can guarantee, I can give you that answer for sure. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you so much for your time. And if you want to reach me, you can reach me by Twitter, and my Twitter handle is at Rafa Bene.